September 24, 1922, Volume 14. All the evil in man is that he has lost the seed of the divine will. The divine will, garment of the soul. As I was in my usual state, my sweet Jesus made himself seen, stripped, shivering with cold, telling me, My daughter, cover me and warm me, for I am cold. See, with sin the creature had stripped herself of all goods, and I wanted to form for her a more beautiful garment, weaving it with my works, beating it with my blood, and adorning it with my wounds. But what is not my sorrow in seeing this garment, so beautiful, being rejected, as creatures content themselves with remaining naked? And I myself feel stripped in them, and I feel their cold. Therefore clothe me, for I need it. And I, how can I clothe you? I have nothing. And he, Indeed, you can clothe me. You have my whole will in your power. Absorb it within you, and then release it, and you will make me the most beautiful garment, a garment of heaven and divine. Oh, how warmed I will be! And I will clothe you with the garment of my will, so that we may be clothed with one single uniform. This is why I want it from you so that I may give it to you with justice. If you clothe me, it is fair that I clothe you to repay you for what you have done for me. All the evil in man is that he has lost the seed of my will. Therefore he does nothing but cover himself with the greatest crimes, which degrade him and make him act like a madman. Oh, how many follies they are about to commit. Fair penalty, since they want to have their own self as God. September 24th, 1928, Volume 24 How it is will of God for him to give his kingdom, but the creature must dispose herself. Example of a father the only purpose of the whole creation, that the fiat reign in the midst of creatures. The way that Jesus has in telling his truths. I was thinking to myself, Jesus desires so much to give us the great gift of the kingdom of his fiat. He yearns to, he wants to. Now, why does he want us to pray in order to give it to us? And my always lovable Jesus, moving in my interior, told me, My daughter, indeed, it is my will to give the kingdom of my divine volition, nor can I help wanting and yearning to give the great gift of it. If it were not so, if I did not yearn for the return of man into the royal palace of my divine will, I would go against the order of our creative work that with highest wisdom created man so that he might live of our own and dwell in the kingdom of our fiat given to him by us as his inheritance. By going out of it, man formed disorder in our creative work. And how can we tolerate letting our most beautiful work remain disordered? Centuries upon centuries have passed and more centuries may pass but we will not change. This will always be our most important point, our only purpose and special interest, that our creative work be restored and reordered as it came out of our creative hands, and that it live in the kingdom of our divine will. We, our adorable majesty, find ourselves in the condition of a father whose son was once happy, of a rare beauty that brought him joy and happiness, and lived as the owner of the inheritance given to him by his father. The son voluntarily left the paternal inheritance. He rendered himself unhappy, and broke the beautiful and pure joys between father and son. 
Now what would the sorrow of the father not be, and his sighs, his tears, and his unshakable will for his dear son to return to be happy? More so since the inheritance given to the son exists. The father himself keeps it in custody, and he longs for his son to take possession of it once again. But in the midst of so much sorrow, tears, and sighs of this father, his will is resolute. He wants his unhappy son to desire, to pray that his paternal inheritance, his lost happiness, be returned to him. This disposes the son to receive and to appreciate his happy state, the return of his inheritance. And the father, drowned with love for his dear son, will say, your praying has formed a right over my heart that burns for you. Take again what you lost. You have deserved it. I am content as long as I see you happy, and I can say, my son is no longer unhappy, but happy. Now, we are more than a father. Even more, his love is a shadow compared to ours and our divine will is unshakable. No one will be able to change it. The unhappiness of man is a disorder for the work of creation, and we want our rights in our work. Just as it came out of us, so do we want it to return to us. Our love drowns us. Our justice demands it. Our goodness claims it. Our very happiness longs for it and does not tolerate unhappiness in our work. Our divine will, surrounding us like a crown, renders us immutable and wants its kingdom to be possessed. But in spite of this, we want the creature to pray, to yearn for the good we want to give. This forms a right over our paternal heart and a shelf within his heart to be able to receive what we want to give so that we may be able to say to him, in our emphasis of love, My son, you have deserved it, and we have given you what we wanted to give you. One who prays disposes himself. What is obtained by praying is appreciated, is kept safe. And since the knowledge of my divine will, the possession of its kingdom, is not an individual good, but a general one. In order to obtain it, I have you pray for all, in the name of all and of each thought, word, and act of creature, so that you may form the right in our divine paternity, that all may receive the kingdom of our fiat, as well as the dispositions within themselves to be able to possess it. So the Queen of Heaven did, to impetrate the kingdom of redemption. She had a prayer a sigh, an act, for all and for each one. She let no one escape her, and by this she gave to each one the right to be able to receive their Redeemer. So I did to redeem them, and so I want you to do for the kingdom of my divine will. After this I continued thinking, and why has the Lord so much interest and he loves so much that his holy will be known and reign in the midst of creatures. And my sweet Jesus added, My daughter, because the first purpose, act, and end of creation was that our divine will alone reign. And in order for it to reign, it is necessary to know it. It was our will that entered the field of action and creation, that imposed itself on the nothing with its creating fiat, and created heavens, suns, and many beautiful works, and also man. And in all the works it created, it placed the seal of its omnipotent fiat as the indelible sign that it would remain inside each of its works as ruling king inside his kingdom. So the purpose of creation was not our power, our goodness, our justice, our immensity, and the like. And if all of these, our attributes, concurred in it, 
It was as consequence, not as purpose. And if we do not obtain the purpose, it is for us as if we had done nothing. And since all created things were made for man and man for us, here is why, by necessity of love, by right of justice, for the honor and decorum of ourselves and of all our works, and as the fulfillment of our purpose, we want our divine will to reign in man as origin, life, and end of his whole being. If you knew how much my fiat suffers in looking at man, it looks at him and says in its sorrow, I made him truly with my creative hands. He is my work. He is truly the one whom I so much delighted in creating. Yet I am not inside of him as in my kingdom. He broke my seal, and putting me out, he destroys for me the purpose for which I gave him life. See then how it is of absolute necessity that my divine will be known and reign, and until it does, our most beautiful works cannot produce for man the goods that they contain. The very work of redemption is without fulfillment. Then I continued thinking, And why does my beloved Jesus not speak about his very fiat as often as before? And Jesus added, My daughter, it is our usual way to give the truths we want to manifest, sip by sip because the creature is incapable of receiving, all at once, all our truths within her soul. And at the same time, we use this in order to let the life of the truth we have manifested mature within her. And taking great delight in seeing in the creature, matured, the beautiful works that the life of our truths produces, we feel drawn by the beauty of our manifestations to manifest yet more truths. And this is why we give time, to have the time and the occasion to take delight in giving more communications. Did we not do the same in creation? We could have created everything that exists all at once and with one single fiat, but we did not do it. When our fiat was being pronounced and our works were coming out, we delighted in looking at the beauty and magnificence of our works, and these moved us to pronounce more fiats so as to form other beautiful works. So I am doing with you. Don't you know that what regards my divine will and its kingdom is nothing other than the continuation of creation? The narration to man that was to be continued had he not sinned, and had he possessed my kingdom of the fiat. But since he rejected my divine will, he interrupted the narration of the story of my will, more so since my will had no more reason to make it, for he no longer possessed its kingdom. And after so many centuries, my will has resumed its narration to make itself known, a sign that it wants to give its kingdom. Therefore, what I manifest to you about my divine will is nothing other than the continuation, continuing from the beginning of creation in order to narrate the life of the divine will. September 24th, 1933, Volume 32, The Humanity of Our Lord, Sanctuary and Custodian of All the Works of Creatures. How love never says enough. My abandonment in the fiat continues, nor can I do less than feel the murmur of its life. Not feeling its murmur that murmurs and gives light, murmurs and strengthens, murmurs and lets one feel its life that warms and transforms one into its own, would be to not have life any more. Divine will, how lovable, admirable you are. How not to love you. 
So I followed its works, such that as I followed them, so they re-poured over me in order to give me love and say to me, We are your works done for you. Take us, possess us, and make us yours, so that in what you do, you have the model of ours ready. And while I followed the works of redemption, my sweet Jesus stopping me told me, My good daughter, in all our works there was always an excess of love toward man, and one excess gave me the push to do another one. Therefore it was not enough for me to descend from heaven to earth in order to remake him again. Every act that I did, every pain, I can say even every breath, was directed at him. I called him in my all-seeingness. I clasped him in my arms and formed him again in order to restore him again and give him again the new life that I had brought from heaven. I bound myself to him in brotherly love in order to place him with me as the offspring of my celestial father. But this was not enough for me. In order to keep him secure, I made of my humanity the depository of all the works, sacrifices, and steps of man. Look at me, how I keep everything enclosed in me. And this brings me to love him doubly in every act that he does. By incarnating myself in the womb of the Immaculate Queen, I formed this humanity of mine, and I constituted myself the head of the human family in order to unite all creatures with me and make them my members. Therefore, everything that they do is mine. In the sanctuary of my holy humanity, I enclosed everyone. I watch over the little good as well as the great. But do you know why? Passing through me, I give them the value as if they were my works, prayers, and sacrifices. The virtue of the head descends into the members, makes a mixture of everything, and I give to them the value of my merits, such that the creature finds himself in me, and I as head find myself in them. But do you believe that my love said or says enough? Ah, no, it will never say enough. The nature of divine love is to always form new inventions of love in order to give love and receive love. If a limit could be placed to this, it encloses our love in our divine circle. But no, ours is immense, and by nature it must always love. This is why after my humanity, I want to make follow the large field of my divine will, which will do incredible things for love of creatures. This is the reason for its knowledges, its wanting to reign. If it does not reign, how can it give liberally, to make a display of its surprises of love? Therefore be attentive, and you will see what my will knows how to do. September 24th, 1934, Volume 33, How One Who Lives in the Divine Will Becomes His Member and Acquires the Inseparability of All the Works of Her Creator. I felt as if I were swimming in the immense abyss of the Divine Will, and since I am too little, I go in order to take and nothing remains for me other than to take the little tiny drops of it. And that little that I take remains in me, and inseparable from the supreme fiat, and makes me feel the inseparability of it and of all its acts. O oh, divine will, you love so much the one who lives in you, that you do not want to do anything, nor do you know how to do anything if you do not let she who already lives in you take part. So much is your ardor of love that you say, What I do, you who live in me must do. It seems to me that you would become unhappy if you could not do and say, What the creature does, I do. What I do, 
she does. But while my mind was lost in it, and I felt the strong bonds of its inseparability, my sweet Jesus, repeating his little visit to my soul, told me, My little daughter of my volition, you must know that the inseparability from it is such and so much for the one who lives in my will, that there is nothing that it does in heaven and in the whole of creation that it does not make the one who lives in it part of. As the body possesses the inseparability of its members, and what one member does, all the other members concentrate themselves in the member that operates. They are aware of everything, and they all take part. So the one who lives in my will becomes a member of it. And as connatural, both parties feel such inseparability, and what one does, the other does. So my volition in heaven makes happy, it beatifies. With its sips of love it enraptures the whole celestial court and makes unheard of joys felt. On earth, for one who lives in its volition, it develops its operating, sanctifying, fortifying life, and acting as conqueror, she makes as many conquests for however many acts, heartbeats, words, thoughts, steps she does in it. Now heaven, the beatified, feel and take part in the operating and conquering life that my will does on earth in the souls who live in it. They feel the inseparability of their acts, breaths, and heartbeats, and the happiness of my conquering will, through which they feel new joys, the beautiful surprises that my conquering fiat knows how to give in the creatures. And since they are conquests of a divine will, the blessed that already live of it feel themselves conquerors of her goods and her works, and oh, how many new seas of happiness they enjoy. And this is why heaven feels itself inseparable even from the breaths of the creature who lives in my will on earth, and the creature feels in virtue of it the inseparability of the joys and of the happiness of heaven the peace of the saints and of hers. Firmness and confirmation in good convert into nature. She feels the life of heaven flow in her members more than blood in her veins. Everything is inseparable for one who lives in my will. From the sky, from the sun, from the whole creation, there is nothing that can separate itself from her. It seems that everything and everyone tell her we are inseparable from you. My own pains suffered on earth, my life, my works, they tell her, we are yours. They surround her, they invest her, and they take the place of honor, and let themselves be bound with inseparable ways by her. This is why the creature who lives in my volition always feels herself little, because feeling the inseparability of so many of my great and innumerable works of my love, of my light, and sanctity, she is the true tiny one in the midst of all my works. But fortunate tiny one, beloved by everyone, who arrives even to giving the beautiful, the new conquests, the new joys, to heaven. Therefore, if you want everything, always live in my volition, and you will feel yourself the happiest creature. End of September 24th Fiat 1-1-1-1